Hey there, Nick Dunthakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to run multiple commands in the background on the command line, and then also go over how we can wait until they all finish before continuing on in the script. This could be very useful if you want to parallelize some workload. For example, maybe you need to run a couple of different SQL dumps in parallel. They can all run by themselves, but you wanna wait until they all finished before doing something uh, with the results of those files. So in this video, we are going to go over a script that I prepared here. You know, we're gonna go over everything, change around some arguments just to see how it works. And by the way, uh, the text version of this script is going to be linked in the description below. So feel free to check that out if you'd like to copy paste this on your own later. But uh, yeah, let's first start off by running the script here. And I am going to run it with the time command just so we can see how long it takes. And once this finishes, we'll you know start going over everything, everything here. But we can see that this entire script took three seconds to execute here. But in the script, we're actually sleeping for three seconds twice. So, you know, if we weren't doing things in the background, then this would actually take six seconds total uh, because this work couldn't have been done in parallel. But when it comes to running commands on the command line, you can choose to run uh, the process in the background by just ending the command with an ampersand. So in this case, we want to sleep for three seconds, but instead of running this in the foreground, like, you know, straight up in the script like this, we're gonna throw it off uh, into the background and it's gonna execute and do its own thing in the background, but then immediately it's gonna move on to the next line in the script. So in this case here, we're running the sleep command in the background, then we're moving on to the next sleep command, also running that in the background, then we run the jobs command here, which we'll get to, into in a bit. But, you know, more importantly for right now, we have this wait command here. And this is, um, you know, the hero of this story, you know, or the thing that goes along with putting something into the background here. Because in this case, we're saying, you know what, let's wait until all of the background jobs in the script finish before we're allowed to move on to the next thing in the script here that prints and we're done. So for example, just to illustrate this a little bit better here, you know, if this wait command weren't here and I rerun this command, it should finish, I guess, pretty much instantly here, right? So it takes whatever, you know, two microseconds or whatever that happens to be to execute the script. Why? Because what happens here is we run the sleep command in the background that immediately finishes. We run the next sleep command here in the background that immediately finishes. We list all of our jobs like before, but this time, we're not using wait here and it just immediately goes to the next line where we just print and we're done. So that is why that finishes that quickly here. And if we could take this one step further and we remove the background calls here, then look at that. Like here, it's like doing something, wait, 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 doing something else. This has the extra new line, whatever, formatting doesn't matter. And eventually we finish here, but we can see the total execution time of the script, six seconds. Why? Because neither of these things were done in the background. Um, so that is how that all comes together here. And when it comes to the jobs command, this will just list out uh, active running jobs for the script here. And this identifier here is called the job ID. So each job that we have has its own ID number. And then also this number here is the process ID or the PID. So uh, just to illustrate that maybe a little bit more, you know, you can run, uh, what is it? Echo dollar sign exclamation point. So you can, you can do that to echo out uh, the PID of the last run command. So in this case, let's rerun this again. This should take three seconds here uh, because they're both in the background and we're waiting. But we can see here, you know, for the first sleep command, the last run command here, its PID is, you know, uh, 11175 here. And we can see it's also 11175. And the second one is 176 here. And they all both line up. So that is how that works here. So, you know, if you were doing some scripting and maybe you just want to wait for the last pit or something, uh, this wait command actually does support uh, the ability to put in a list of PIDs to wait for. Typically though, in my day-to-day, -day, I don't really find myself doing it that often. That's why I didn't include an example here. But you know, if you had some variable, uh, you know, some PID here where you just assigned uh, this value to some PID and, you know, you could totally do that if you'd like. I think theoretically you can even do something like percent sign one and two which are shorthand ways to get job IDs. And I don't know if they get translated to PIDs behind the scenes. Like, honestly, this is, um, I guess, a little bit above my pay grade or, you know, I'm unprepared to, to really go into that. I've seen some examples of that online, but that's not something I really do in my day to day. Let us know in the comments below if that will uh, work pretty well. But for me, normally, honestly, it's just waiting for everything to finish and then moving on. If I want to execute more jobs later, you know, basically the same pattern applies here. And uh, let me just get rid of those echoes there. Uh, in addition to jobs here, you know, if you don't run it with the dash L flag, the L flag just gives you a little bit more information. So in this case, uh, we're just not gonna get the PID if we don't include dash L. There also is another flag here too, where we can do dash P, which is just going to return the PID. So that could be a little bit nice if you're doing some scripting where you just wanna get all the PIDs of all the jobs, then you can get uh, them all like that. And then you can go and, you know, wait for specific ones, remove one from the list, move the last one from the list, first one, like, you know, you basically have full reign to do uh, 
whatever you'd like to do. Um, honestly, you know, in my day-to-day, -day, usually I'm not even running this jobs command here. I, I basically just included it in the script because it's a good demonstration of showing you what's actively running here. And then we can see too though, like, you know, after that, after the wait command, uh, we can just print it again. And if we run this, then yeah, there shouldn't be uh, any jobs running because at this point in time, after the wait, all the jobs are finished here. So in this case, uh, we can see that those jobs have finished running. So basically, you know, running is a status here. So it's either running or it's done, or um, I guess in theory, like things could break and maybe it would say error. I actually don't know in that case because when I write code, things don't break. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, yeah, uh, that's that basically. So yeah, these are all basically the tools that you need, right? Execute things in the background with the ampersand, ampersand, wait for them to be finished. And if you want to get some more information, there you go. So these three things together are a very, very powerful concept. And uh, it can definitely save you some time, right? If you're doing a really expensive operation, like a SQL dump on a large table or a database or something like that, and you know, that thing might take like two minutes to run, you know, substantially, uh, potentially way more too, right? If it's a bigger database, but if you have to run three things that each take two minutes and you can actually do them in parallel, then you're saving yourself, yeah, a lot of time there because instead of, you know, it taking six minutes to finish sequentially, it can finish in two minutes where each one just does the work on its own. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments below some use cases or patterns where you've used this in the past. And uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really, really does help. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.